Good day, students. Today uh, we're going to go with lecture number 14 of Total Quality Management and we're going to be studying about knowledge. Now when we speak about knowledge in Total Quality Management, one of the new ideas be behind improving quality uh, is the systematic management of knowledge. So quality improve karne ka jo tarika hai, uske piche jo hai, management of knowledge jo hai, the knowledge of how to systematically manage a project is very important. So knowledge management is a response uh, to the explosion in uh, information and the realization that knowledge is, together with quality, a key driver behind organizational success. So knowledge management, jo hai, wo, agar hum usko response dekhe, to it's like an explosion in information. Um, or is cheese ki realization ke knowledge jo hai wo quality ke saath mil ke jo hai it's the basic thing that drives an organization towards success or leads an organization towards success so the problem is how, not how to find information but to be able to successfully manage it so information hassle karna wo difficult nahi hai ya wo problem nahi hai but usko successfully manage kis tarah karna hai wo important hai now knowledge management uh, was a theme of W. Edwards Demings in his last book, The New Economics in 1974. So, <coughs> knowledge management, jo hai, wo Demings ki jo last book usne likha, likhi, uh, 74 mein, The New Economics, usme knowledge management ke baare mein, uh, bohut sari information usne provide ki. Now, Deming believed that all organizations should understand their knowledge sources, manage on the basis of rational data, and make decisions based on all the available information. So Deming ne ek cheez pe believe ye rakha uska ke organizations uh, need to understand ke unke knowledge resources kya hai, unke source kin se jin se wo knowledge gain kar rahe Aur phir us base pe usko manage karna um, of a rational data ko and make decisions based on the available information aur un uh, jo information availability hai unko uski base pe um, unko uh, decisions karna Fastly karna and how to uh, use that knowledge um, in a positive way in an organization. Um, that's what he discussed in it. So, what is knowledge management? If we consider ke knowledge management kya hai? So, knowledge management uh, is a subject that is still in its infancy and one where there is a considerable element of novelty. So, knowledge management jo hai, wo, um, abhi yani, it's just like it's like we've just newly given birth to this uh, thing and it's like in its um, infancy in the childhood in the early stages of developing so and we've given it um, a considerable element of novelty also so nevertheless interest in it is expanding at an enormous rate so it's my interest to have who a uh, enormous rate to expand hori until fairly recently the term knowledge management had a comparatively narrow definition Ab, aajkal, knowledge management jo hai is it's increasing take a pele bohut uska jo hai definition bohut limited tha or usko explain karna bohut limited tha but now ab wo ek enormous rate pe jo hai na expand ho raha hai so when first in the 1980s uh, it was limited to describing artificial intelligence and the processes associated with the application of computing to early 1980s mein jab uh, sirf knowledge management ko uh, computers ke point of view se uh, judge kiya jata tha and sirf uh, artificial intelligence ke point of view se hum usko uh, lete the ki wo processes and jo associated only with uh, either computers or artificial intelligence robots and stuff like that um, but that was in the 80s so but um, by the time it started to be used in management literature in the early 90s uh, it had taken on a broader prospect so although uh, with real, uh, little real consensus about its meaning. So even though the, the, the time had started uh, to be used in management, ke ek time start hua management literature ke baare mein, 1990s mein, usko ek uh, literature ka hissa banaya gaya, knowledge management ko. And uh, us wakat iska prospective zyada broad hua. 
and also with the r little real consensus uh, about its meaning. So even though okay, so that its meaning is not clear, it is not sense clear. Nahin tha. So what does it exactly mean? Now this is still somewhat true, uh, although there is now far more clarity and focus over its meaning. So still, abhi bhi ye chiz aisa hi hai, but ab uske मीनिंग को ज्यादा जो है फोकस किया जा रहा है और ज्यादा क्लियर ली हम उसके मीनिंग को समझ सकते हैं कि व्हाट डज नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट मीन सो द टर्म नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट इज अप्लाइड टू एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ न्यू टेक्नोलॉजी टू मच ब्रॉडर एंडीवर्स ऑफ ट्राइंग टू हार्नेस द इंटेलेक्चुअल कैपिटल ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन नेवरटेलेस देयर इज अ कंसेंसस डेवलपिंग अराउंड द आईडिया ऑफ नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट as being about learning to know what we know. So, knowledge uh, management ka jo term hai, wo har cheez ko hum apply kar sakte hai. And hum usko new technology ke hasaab se jo hai, uh, bhi explain kar sakte hai, ke ek organization mein, uh, uski development kitni zaruri hai. Or idea jo hai knowledge management ka, wo basically ye hai ke, it is about learning to know what we know. Hum us, चीज के बारे में मजीद सीखते हैं जो हमें ऑलरेडी नॉलेज हो नाउ दिस परस्पेक्टिव इज द वन दैट इज एक्सप्लोर्ड इन दिस चैप्टर सो इस चैप्टर में हम जो है इस लेक्चर में हम ये इस परस्पेक्टिव को ज्यादा पढ़े क्योंकि हाउ टू लर्न टू नो व्हाट वी ऑलरेडी नो नाउ द आइडिया इज दैट नोइंग व्हाट वी नो एंड यूजिंग इट क्रिएटिवली एंड प्रोडक्टिवली इज द मेजर सोर्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक वैल्यू and competitive advantage at uh, the disposal of any organization and is an idea that educational institutions need to take seriously. So perspective jo hai agar hum dekhe, uh, that uh, is the one that is explored in this chapter mein. Aur uska idea jo hai is knowing what we know jo knowledge humare paas hai uske baare mein janna, and using it creatively and productively और उसको क्रिएटिव uh, तरीके से यूज करना और प्रोडक्टिवली यूज करना इज द मेजर सोर्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक वैल्यू एंड कॉम्पिटेटिव एडवांटेज लेट्स से एट द डिस्पोजल ऑफ एनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड इज एन आइडिया दैट एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट नीड्स टू टेक सीरियसली आल्सो सो एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन के लिए बड़ा इंपॉर्टेंट है कि uh, उसकी क्रिएटिविटी नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट की वो यूज करें एंड uh, अपने कॉम्पिटेटिव एडवांटेजेस के लिए उसको यूज करें और इकोनॉमिकली भी वैल्यू है उसकी ठीक है एंड इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर देम टू स्टार्ट यूजिंग नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट so however now organizations need to be clear that knowledge is more than information so ek cheez lekin organizations ko ye cheez clear honi chahiye ki knowledge jo hai wo information se zara zyada power use hoti hai uski now more and better information does not mean that we are any more knowledgeable so agar hame zyada ya behtar information mile to that doesn't mean ke hame knowledge bhi hamari badh gayi hai zyada so in fact often the opposite can be the case so sometimes iska ulat bhi ho sakta hai information by itself can often lead to confusion and overload so bahut zyada information agar hum le le to wo overload ya confusion ki taraf bhi leke ja sakta hai so information overload is one of today's most serious problems uh, both for individuals and for organizations so informations ka overload jo hai wo aaj kal ek major serious problem hai individuals ke liye bhi aur organizations ke liye bhi now it is the uh, productive use of information that is important aur um, jo information ka productive use hai hum usko productively kis tarah use kar rahe hain wo aaj kal organizations ke liye important ho jati hai now knowledge is uh, information that has been consciously processed and which has established meaning and value to those who use it. So knowledge, we can say that knowledge is such an information that we have consciously processed in our mind and which we have established is that we have understood it and we have understood it value jo log usko use kar rahe hai uski value unko maloom ho jai so a key to successful knowledge management is the exploit all forms of knowledge but formal and informal so successful knowledge management jo hai wo us cheez ko exploit kar rahe hai ke sub forms of knowledge ko exploit kar rahe hai both jo hai formal and informal dono ko 
Now this can be achieved by developing an open knowledge sharing culture and developing processes linked to appropriate technologies um, that facilitate the sharing and exploitation of all available information. So, agar hum isko dekhen ke hum, uh, this can be achieved by developing an open knowledge. Thik hai, open knowledge kis tarah develop karte hai? Uh, sharing culture jo hai, knowledge sharing culture ek develop karna kisi organization mein. And then uh, developing the processes linked to appropriate technologies. Or fir appropriate pro uh, technologies ke hasaab se usko processes ko link karna. That facilitate the sharing and exploitation of all available information. Or fir uh, wo har... Uh, technology is facilitate kar rahi hai sari available information hai uski sharing and exploitation in an organization so knowledge sharing is very important within aur wo culture develop karna bahut zaruri hai now um, what happens if we ignore our knowledge base agar hum apne knowledge base ko ignore karte hai to uske surat mein kya cheeze hame nuksan mein aati hai now there are a number of unfortunate consequences of ignoring the need to properly harness both institutional and individual knowledge so agar hum uh, is point of view se dekhen to bahut sare aise number of unfortunate consequences hai theek hai agar hum unko ignore karte hain need ke hum properly usko use kaise kare apni knowledge ko institutional mein bhi aur individual knowledge ko bhi so then some of the consequences are listed below so uske uh, natije mein hame ye cheeze main uh, hame maybe hamare liye nuksan mein jaye zyada loss of expertise hoga lost or missed opportunities, having to reinvent the wheel, loss of knowledge of best practices, loss of learning opportunities, damage to key stakeholder relationships, reduction in the quality of future knowledge, damage to the organization's culture and social capital, and the danger that other organizations will capitalize on ideas that we uh, were that were once their own because they could not harness their knowledge better so agar hum consequences dekhe iske nateeje mein agar hum apne knowledge ko ignore karte hain knowledge base ko so hum expertise lose karte hain theek hai hum opportunities miss karte hain hame cheeze reinvent karni padti hain dobara se unko start karna padta hai fir hame un practices mein best practices mein loss of knowledge hoti then loss of learning opportunities hai theek hai seekhne ko nahi milta bahut kuch then damage to key stakeholder relationships then reduction in the quality of future knowledge future knowledge jo hum gain karna cha rahe hain usme reductions ho jati hain we reduce the quality jo hai uh, of gaining more knowledge in the future then damage to the organization's culture and social capital ek organization ke culture mahol environment aur uska social capital ko damage karte hain aur phir ye cheez bhi the danger that organizations will capitalize wo aise ideas ko because they apne knowledge ko agar wo behtar tarike se handle nahi kar pate to phir wo usko manage karna unke liye difficult ho jata hai so what is knowledge agar hum knowledge ko dekhe so knowledge is a key organizational asset that creates and adds value to the organization's products and services so knowledge jo hai hum uh, dekhte hai to knowledge ko hum judge kar sakte hai ki it's a key organizational asset hai aisa theek hai jo create kar raha hai and adds value uh, to the organization's products and services ek organization ki products or services ko enhance kar raha hai so it is composed of those insights and understandings that give meaning to the uh, information and data at the organization's disposal. So, if we look at it, then insights to have our understanding create an information uh, data in the organization's disposal. Now, knowledge originates in the mind of knowing subjects who evaluate and interpret it in the light of the framework provided by their ex experiences, their values, their culture and learning. So knowledge which originates from where it originates, it creates in our minds. For those things, we have knowledge about the subjects that we know, which we know, which we can evaluate, translate, and we can see in that framework, in light, we can judge it from our own experiences, we can judge it from our values, we can judge it from culture and learning. So, in the organizational context, knowledge takes a range of explicit forms and formats. 
including processes, procedures, and documents, as well as more tacit forms, including values, beliefs, emotions, judgments, and prejudices. So, organizational context, if we look at an organizational context, mein knowledge jo hai, takes a range of explicit forms and formats. So, in forms and formats, mein, uh, jata, jis mein, uh, processes, procedures, or documents jo hai, wo included. Hote hai. Plus, un mein including uh, values, beliefs, emotions, judgments, prejudices, so if properly applied, all forms of knowledge can provide the driving force for action. So if we apply knowledge ki in forms ko hum proper tarike se apply kare, to phir ye it can uh, lead us towards uh, acting properly and successfully. So however, now if we consider what is knowledge, so however knowledge is not all of a type, it is a complex and multidimensional idea. So it's not a type nahi hai, but a complex or multidimensional idea. Hai. Now to answer the question, how do we manage it best? Now, if we want to answer this question, how do we manage it properly? We need to understand some of the complexities surrounding it. So, we need to judge some of the complexities. And in particular, to make a distinction between two important but different uh, types of knowledge. So, but um, we need to understand this thing that there are some complexities or such things that are surrounding it, which, let's say, in particular, creates a distinction create between uh, the important, two important and uh, different types of knowledge. Knowledge is two parts of it. Both are important hai, and two different types of knowledge. Ke. Now, these two types uh, or concepts of knowledge are crucial to knowledge management and to using knowledge effectively um, in the organizational context. So, these two concepts or types of knowledge are very knowledge management and to use knowledge effectively in use karna ya organizational context, mein usko leke aana. Uske liye ye do concepts are very important. Hai. Ab, now, the two concepts are generally known as explicit and tacit knowledge. So, knowledge ko hum do different concepts mein divide karte hain, jo major important concepts hai, ek explicit aur ek tacit. Now, each requires different strategies to successfully harvest the knowledge they contain. So, in dono ko jo hai, dono strategies ko, in ko different strategies ke mutabik deal karna padta hai, taake wo uh, knowledge ko properly uh, maintain, contain kar sake, aur uh, they can harvest or usko jama kiya ja sakta hai proper tarike se. Of the two concepts, now, explicit knowledge is what most people think of when we use the term knowledge. So, if we normally use knowledge ka word, use karte hai, human beings would uh, first of all think of knowledge as being explicit. Now, the reason for this is because explicit knowledge is easier to understand than tacit knowledge. And it is easier to manage and manipulate. So, uh, concept of knowledge ka log explicit knowledge ki taraf kyun usko ekdam uh, relevant samajhte hain ya usse usko uh, compare karte hain kyunki explicit knowledge jo hai wo samajhne mein zyada aasan hai nisbatan ke tacit knowledge ke and usko manage aur manipulate karna change karna usko zyada easy hota hai now explicit knowledge jo hai is precise and uh, codifiable knowledge as opposed to tacit knowledge which is more intangible and personal so explicit knowledge jo hai wo both to the point hai aur uh, codifiable knowledge usko keh sakte hain aur jo tacit knowledge hai wo intangible bhi hai aur zyada personal hai so explicit knowledge can easily be articulated and transmitted explicit knowledge ko hum easily tarike se transmit kar sakte hain ya bata sakte hain explain kar sakte hain now it is the knowledge that can be most easily articulated and has uh, its source in formal organizational documentation such as procedure manuals mathemati mathematical equations patents procedures technical reports computer databases files library books archive documents, letters, organizational policies, and financial statements. So, knowledge ko hum zyada kis tarah se judge kar sakte hain ke uske sources jo hai in formal organizational documentation mein um, uske procedure manuals ki tor pe hum usko dek sakte hain explicit knowledge ko hum kaise judge karenge. Uh, it would be more in the form of maybe manuals, 
ठीक है वर्किंग मैनुअल्स प्रोसीजर मैनुअल्स एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में उसकी मैथमेटिकल इक्वेशंस के तौर पे एक्सप्लिसिट नॉलेज को जज किया जा सकता है पेटेंट्स हैं प्रोसीजर्स हैं टेक्निकल रिपोर्ट्स हैं कंप्यूटर डेटाबेसेस हैं फाइल्स हैं लाइब्रेरी बुक्स हैं ऐसे डॉक्यूमेंट्स हैं जिनको सेव करके रखा हुआ है लेटर्स हैं ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल पॉलिसीज या फिर फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट्स ऑल ऑफ दीज वुड कम अंडर एक्सप्लिसिट नॉलेज एजुकेशनल एस्टेब्लिशमेंट्स now routinely collect huge amounts of this kind of information in the form of data about students their background their progress their assessments and their examination results so educational point of view se agar hum dekhe to educational establishments jo hai wo routine mein uh, is tarah ki information bahut huge amounts mein badi amounts mein collect karte hain jo uh, us form mein hai ke student students ke bare mein data collect karna उनके बैकग्राउंड के बारे में उनके प्रोग्रेस के बारे में उनकी असेसमेंट्स और फिर उनके एग्जामिनेशन रिजल्ट्स के सो ऑल ऑफ दीज अकॉम्पलिश टुगेदर वुड बी कम अंडर द एक्सप्लिसिट नॉलेज फ्रेमवर्क सो व्हेन वी स्पीक अबाउट हार्वेस्टिंग फॉर्मल एंड एक्सप्लिसिट नॉलेज जब हम ये देखते हैं कि फॉर्मल और एक्सप्लिसिट नॉलेज को हमने कैसे हार्वेस्ट करना कैसे सेव करना सो इट्स असेंशियल फॉर द प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग ऑफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ताकि एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन प्रॉपर तरीके से फंक्शन कर सके नाउ हाउ एवर वाइल देयर इज पर्पज इन कलेक्टिंग इट ऑफ एन देयर इज लिटल ओवरऑल प्लान विद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू फुली एक्सप्लोइड इट सो अगर ये चीज हम जज करते हैं कि उसके पर्पस जो है उसको कलेक्ट करने में नहीं है बट उसका ओवरऑल जो है देर इज लिटल ओवरऑल प्लान विद इन द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टू फुली एक्सप्लोइट तो उसको पूरी तरीके से ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में एक्सप्लोइट करना या यूज करना वुड बी वेरी डिफिकल्ट इफ वाल देर इज उसको पर्पस अगर हम उसको प्रॉपर uh, तरीके से अगर हम कलेक्ट कर सकते हैं तो देन यूज में लाना उसको दैट्स अ डिफरेंट थिंग नाउ इट इज यूजुअली जस्ट कलेक्टेड फॉर द टास्क इन हैंड तो आमतौर पे वो सिर्फ कोई भी टास्क या कोई प्रोजेक्ट जो आप कर रहे हैं उसके लिए उसको कलेक्ट किया जाता है दैट मोमेंट सो ऑफन लिटल थॉट इज गिवन एज टू हाउ इट कैन बी एक्सप्लोइटेड फॉर द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ओन लॉन्ग टर्म बेनिफिट इवन दो पोटेंशियल पावर ऑफ हॉर्नसिन इट कैन बी अनोर्मस सो ये थॉट पे लेके आना उसको के जो है ना इट वुड बी वेरी लॉन्ग टर्म बेनिफिट एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन को कैसे हो सकती है उससे उसके बारे में बहुत कम सोचा जाता है एंड इवन दो पोटेंशियल पावर ऑफ हार्नेस इन इट कैन बी अनोर्मस अब वो उसको अगर हम हार्नेस कर लेते हैं या उसको यूज करते हैं तो उसका पोटेंशियल पावर हमारे पास बहुत होगा लेकिन उसको लॉन्ग टर्म बेनिफिट के लिए यूजली ऑर्गेनाइजेशन यूज नहीं करती इट कैन बी शेयर्ड एंड यूज टू क्रिएट न्यू एंड यूजफुल नॉलेज ठीक है आफ्टर ऑल एक्सप्लिसिट नॉलेज इज इजी टू कम्युनिकेट एंड सो कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड रिलेटिवली इजीली बिटवीन इंडिविजुअल्स बोथ विद इन एंड विदाउट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो उसको शेयर करना um, और उस नॉलेज को यूज में लेके आना इट वुड बी लाइक इट कैन बी नए नॉलेज को क्रिएट करने में वो हेल्पफुल हो सकता है ठीक है और टू क्रिएट समथिंग न्यू एंड यूजफुल वी कुड यूज द एक्सप्लेसिड नॉलेज क्योंकि एक्सप्लेसिड नॉलेज जो है वो कम्युनिकेट करने में इजी होता है ज्यादा एंड इट्स वेरी इजी टू ट्रांसफर इट रिलेटिवली बिटवीन इंडिविजुअल्स बहुत ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के अंदर भी और बाहर भी सो विथ मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी इट कैन बी डाउनलोडेड इन टू डेटा बेसिस एंड मेड एक्सेसिबल ओवर कंपनी इंटरनेट एंड द इंटरनेट सो अगर मॉडर्न टेक्नोलॉजी आजकल इतनी आ चुकी है कि हम उसको अपने डेटा बेसिस में डाउनलोड कर सकते हैं एंड हम उसको कंपनी के इंटरनेट जो इंटरनली कंपनी जो है यूज करी सिस्टम और इंटरनेट पे भी उसको इजीली हम एक्सेसिबल कर सकते हैं अपने कंपनी की इस एक्सप्लेस नॉलेज को नाउ यूजिंग एक्सप्लेस नॉलेज effectively is one of the challenges of knowledge management so explicit knowledge ko effective tarike se use karna wo knowledge management ka ek challenge hai now it is often a difficult and time consuming task to uh, find and locate particular pieces of information and in a form that is readily accessible so sometimes both time consuming aur mushkil ho jata hai kisi ek khaas cheez ke bare mein information hasil karna aur uh, us information ko leke fir usse jo hai usko readily accessible banana uh, 
that would be is very very difficult chote chote pieces ko jod ke jo hai ek proper knowledge gain karna and then pure usko form mein isliye ki wo usable bhi ho sake so while an organization store of explicit knowledge should support proper decision making all unfortunately in most cases organization uh, hurdles limit employees ability to gain the maximum value from it so ek organization ka store ko agar hum explicit knowledge ke point of view se agar hum dekhe uh, it should support proper decision making ek uh, proper decision making ko support karna chahiye aur unfortunately lekin aise cases mein jo hai organizational hurdles jo hai wo um, employees ko limit kar dete hain unke ability ko ke wo uh, maximum value gain kar sake us knowledge se so this is particularly true when information is in a multitude of locations and formats so that it is not always apparent where to find the desired information aur ye sirf us surat mein hota hai ke particularly jab information mukhtalif jagahon pe locations pe aur different formats mein available ho aur hame exactly ye maloom na ho ke humne wo information kahan se aur kaise gather karni hai aur hamari desired information kahan hai so that takes a lot of time searching now often there is no way of knowing for example uh, whether particular pieces of information are out of date so uh, sometimes ye janna for example possible nahi hota ke particular pieces jo hai information ke wo out of date hai ya up to date hai so in many educational institutions let's say that if a typical teacher or lecturer is asked to produce the school or colleges organizational uh, organization chart program of self evaluation then student recruitment uh, recruitment figures the internal telephone directory or a list of courses and programs is often becomes a chore when it should be a quick and routine activity so educational institutions mein agar hum dekhe to ek typical teacher ya lecturer ke liye ek school or college ka uh, organizational uh, organization chart produce karna ya ek self evaluation ka program uh, decide karna ya student recruitment figures ko judge karna ya internal telephone directory maybe or a list of courses and programs jo hai wo ek kai dafa usko access karna wo phir bahut difficult ho jata hai aur ek aam um, activity daily routine ki ek activity ya kaam mein nahi uh, aap usko any judge kar sakte hai uske liye aapko bahut effort karna pad jata hai aur mushkil ho jata hai wo so it is often said that finding the internal um, telephone extension takes at least 5 minutes in the average organization so internal telephone extension kisi ka judge karna mein bhi ek average organization mein to uske liye 5 minutes required hote hai so explicit knowledge now explicit knowledge is objective and formal knowledge aise formal and objective tarike se knowledge provide karna tangible information theek hai capable of being codified usko codify kiya ja sakta hai consciously accessible uh, access uski easy ho easily networked uh, on databases and intranets or within organization jo uh, an uh, सिस्टम यूज हो रहे हैं और डेटा पेसेज हैं उसमें प्रॉपरली नेटवर्क हो इजली कम्युनिकेटेड एंड ट्रांसफर टू अदर्स बाई लेटर्स ई मेल्स एंड इंटरनेट सो और फिर उनको कम्युनिकेट करना दूसरों के दूसरों को कम्युनिकेट करना लेटर्स के थ्रू या ई मेल्स के थ्रू या इंटरनेट के थ्रू वो ईजी होना सो दैट वुड ऑल कम अंडर the explicit knowledge ab hum agar tacit knowledge dekhte hain now tacit knowledge there is a second concept of knowledge so knowledge ka dusra concept jo hai wo tacit knowledge hai now that derives from the uh, works of the philosopher michael polanyi uh, so michael polanyi ne um, tacit knowledge ke bare mein philosophy apni uh, main uh, start ki he sums up the concept in his memorable phrase we know much more than we can tell uska ek memorable phrase tha jis pe usne kaha tha ki we know much more than we can tell hum hamare batane se zyada hame knowledge hai yani hame utna kuch malum hai jo hum bata bhi nahi sakte so in using this phrase he illustrates how difficult tacit knowledge is to communicate and to share और इसमें उसने ये नहीं ये चीज एक्सप्लेन कर दी कि टैसेट नॉलेज जो है वो किसी को कम्युनिकेट करना या शेयर करना कितना डिफिकल्ट हो जाता है सो टैसेट नॉलेज हाईलाइट्स द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ अ सब्जेक्टिव डायमेंशन टू नॉलेज सो ये सब्जेक्टिव डायमेंशन नॉलेज की तरफ उसको हाईलाइट कर रहा होता है सो इट इज पर्सनली एंड सोशली एम्बेडेड नॉलेज दैट कंटेन्स हंचेस 
insights, intuitions, feelings, imagery and emotions. So personally and socially, जो है वो ये knowledge जो है embedded होता है हंचे से यानी ideas आपको अंदाजे हो, insights हो, like you can foresee, you can think about an idea, intuitions ठीक है किसी को कोई feeling हो जाती है कि ये चीज ऐसे होगी है उसका ये result आएगा, imagery and emotions. So it is deeply rooted in an individual's experience and consciousness. And is fashioned by his or her experiences, values, and culture. So insights and intuitions, um, tacit knowledge, वो चीज़ होगी जो आपके already आपके experiences और consciousness में आपके inbuilt, rooted है, deeply rooted है, और आपको अपने experience, values और culture के हिसाब से आपको मालूम हो जाता है कि आपको कोई idea हो जाता है, कोई आप अंदाज़ा लगा लेते हैं, कोई intuition आपको आ जाती है, ठीक है, कोई feeling आ जाती है that you're supposed to do this or you're supposed not to do this. वो आपकी knowledge internally inbuilt hoti jo apke hunches pe kaam kar rhi hoti hai so tacit knowledge would be that now it is the knowledge that helps individuals make sense of their world and as such is often deeply affected by personal beliefs and values aur ye wo knowledge hai jo individuals ko jo hai help karti hai apne dunia ko samajhne ke liye aur usse ye cheez dekhti hai ki often deeply affected by personal beliefs aur ye insaan ke apni zati personal beliefs aur values ki base pe judge ki jati hai so tacit or personal knowledge is socially constructed knowledge socially जो construct हुई भी हो knowledge जो हमें social environment से हमने gain की हो the folklore of the organization like maybe a folk tale of an organization stored inside people's head लोगों के जहनों के अंदर दिमाग के अंदर होती है the knowledge of the mastery of a skill किसी let's say के कोई skill है उसकी knowledge उसको कैसे use करना है वो knowledge जो है that stored in a person's mind so, kisi skill ka jo hai usage, that's also tacit knowledge. Mix of values, insights, hunches, prejudices, feelings, images, symbols and beliefs. Koi beliefs hai aapki, thik hai, jo aapki cultural beliefs ho sakte hai. Koi aise symbols ya images ya aise insights hai, jo aap jis ki upar koi andaza laga sakte hai, ya koi prejudice hai, ya koi feeling hai aisi. Thik hai, unki mixed values. Phir difficult to codify and to store on databases and internets. So, because this is more than in the mind of the people, this knowledge is in inbuilt consciousness, this is a tacit knowledge. Let's say if you learned how to use a particular, let's say how to use a computer, then that is stored in your tacit knowledge. So, to explain that maybe would be very difficult. So, and to codify it or store it on databases or uh, internets, it would be very difficult. So, often difficult to communicate and share. Both the fa wo share karna ye communicate, apni feelings karna bada difficult ho jata. A valuable and rich source of experience and learning. Lekin wo aapke experience or learning ke liye bhot valuable source hai. Now, implications for managers. Ab iski managers ke liye implications kya hai? Now, the distinction between the two concepts of knowledge has a practical implications for its management. So, a distinction like that, two concepts ke beech mein, thik hai, wo concepts of knowledge jo hai, practical uski implications or uski jo management ke liye, to judge those. Understanding the distinction helps an organization analyze the nature of the knowledge at its disposal. So, ek understand karna, ठीक है एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के लिए डिस्टिंक्टिव उसको हेल्प करना ठीक है और उसका नेचर ऑफ नॉलेज को जो उनकी डिस्पोजल पे है जो उनको अवेलेबल है उसको अंडरस्टैंड करना और डिस्टिंग करना वो डिफिकल्ट उसको डिफिकल्ट तरीके से यानी उसको अंडरस्टैंड करने में वो हेल्प करती है सो इट वुड लाइक इट हेल्प्स एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन um, cover all of those aspects. So it enables it to understand the importance of tacit knowledge, but it also requires to understand its limitations. So ye enable karti hai ek organization ko ke uske tacit knowledge ki importance judge karna, lekin uski limitations ko bhi samajna. Ke uski limitations how to share it or maybe 
use it or uh, store it in a database how, how difficult that is uski limitations janna bhi bahut zaruri so explicit and tacit knowledge each require different forms of management so explicit knowledge ke liye tacit knowledge ke liye dono ke liye different management ke liye uh, tareeke hain now while tacit knowledge lies at the heart of an organization its very nature uh, renders it highly personal and it is difficult to use effectively so tacit knowledge jo hai wo ek organization ke heart pe to hai but usko render karna ya usko samajhna wo highly personal and it's very difficult uh, ke usko effectively use kiya ja sake so managing knowledge is as much about good people management as about information and data processing so a uh, management knowledge jo hai that's about uh, how good people uh, would manage things and about how they would process uh, the information that they have so there is a need to find processes to make tacit knowledge communicable and um, available to a wider audience wherever possible to koshish ye honi chahiye ki tacit knowledge ko hum zyada uh, communicate kar sake aur wider range pe uh, hum jo hai na wider uh, audience ko hum uh, ये चीज ट्रांसफर करके ये प्रोसेस जो है ना उसके थ्रू हम टैसेट नॉलेज शेयर कर सकें सो हार्नसिंग टैसेट नॉलेज रिक्वायर्स एक्सलेंट मैनेजमेंट सो टैसेट नॉलेज को स्टोर करना या उसको यूज करने के लिए एक्सलेंट मैनेजमेंट की जरूरत होती है इंटरपर्सनल एंड कम्युनिकेशनल स्किल्स एज वेल एज अ गुड आई इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर सो एक कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स और इंटरपर्सनल स्किल्स यानी पर्सन टू पर्सन स्किल्स बातचीत करने का आपस में वो बहुत हाई uh, होने चाहिए एंड उसके अलावा आईटी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर की भी नॉलेज होनी चाहिए सो रियलाइजिंग द पोटेंशियल ऑफ टैस नॉलेज इन्वॉल्व इन अनोमस कल्चर शिफ्ट एंड इज अ मच बिगर प्रोजेक्ट देन जस्ट इन्वेस्टिंग इन इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी सो टैस नॉलेज को जो अगर हम कल्चरल शिफ्ट में चेंज करना चाहें तो वो एक बहुत बड़ा यानी सिर्फ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी में इन्वेस्ट करने से ज्यादा बड़ा प्रोजेक्ट है इट्स अबाउट ट्रस्टिंग एंड वैल्यूइंग योर स्टाफ सो अपने स्टाफ और को वैल्यू करना और ट्रस्ट करने पे डिपेंड करता है now simply listening to people talk about their personal knowledge is an important activity in an organization and is the reason why appraisals performance review feedback sessions mentoring exit interviews and other good hr practices are so important so logon ko acche tarike se sunna theek hai unki personal knowledge aur important activities unke jo hai organization mein usko record karne through jiski wajah se appraisals jo hai performance review feedback sessions jo hai monitoring hai interviews hai ya good एच आर प्रैक्टिस वो भी इम्पोर्टेंट हो जाती हैं सो टीम वर्क एंड मोर इनफॉर्मल नेटवर्किंग एंड मॉनिटरिंग ग्रुप्स कैन ऑल्सो बी अ वेरी यूजफुल मीन्स ऑफ शेयरिंग टैसेट नॉलेज सो टीम वर्क जो है उसमें जो है इनफॉर्मल नेटवर्किंग में मॉनिटरिंग ग्रुप्स को मॉनिटर करना ठीक है वो भी एक टैसेट नॉलेज को शेयर करने का अच्छा तरीका है सो एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन as a organizations grow then it becomes increasingly unlikely that uh, word of mouth will be an adequate means of conveying all the tacit knowledge that needs to be shared so jo <clears throat> jo organizations grow karti jati hain ye janna ke sirf ek increasingly ke ek word of mouth hi kafi ho theek hai wo um, that would be an adequate uh, means of conveying agar hum samjhe ki tacit knowledge ko share karne ke liye kafi hai so um, wo bahut unlikely ho jayega theek hai just to believe and work on that base so implications for managers would be that there will be a need to find more formalized means of sharing so zyada formal tarike se share karne ka jo hai tacit knowledge ko wo tarike janna zaruri hai action learning projects as a part of learning organization initiative are a good method of doing doing this so particularly where an inquiry team investigates an issue and reports their findings back to a wider group so action learning projects were important hai ek organization ki initiative pe and uh, it's a good method of uh, doing this particularly khas taur pe jab inquiry team jo hai investigate kar rahi hai an issue and reports their findings um, back to a wider group aur apni findings ko wo ek uh, bade group ko zyada report kar rahi hai so this is particularly power if the inquiry team is a cross level cross corporate group 
اور یہ زیادہ افیکٹیو کب ہوتا ہے جب انکوائری ٹیم جو بنی ہوئی ہے وہ ان پروجیکٹس کے بارے میں سے نہ جانا سیکھنے کے بجائے وہ ان کو they're trying to investigate کوئی ایشو کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں یا کوئی رپورٹ کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں so they have to be at a cross level اور a cross corporate group ہونا چاہیے ان کا only then it would be more powerful so sharing knowledge uh, when we speak about sharing knowledge then the focus of management needs to be on understanding the dynamics and the psychology of personal knowledge the tacit knowledge is difficult to control in a predictable way so focus of management jo hai uh, uski need jo hai wo ek um, understanding the dynamics theek hai dynamics ko understand karna and the psychology of personal knowledge tacit knowledge is difficult to control in a predictable way or tacit knowledge ko control karna jo hai ek predictable way mein wo bahut difficult hai so for example many employees do not recognize that the knowledge they possess is even the property or province of their employers and may see it as uh, their own intellectual capital so agar for example hum ye cheez dekhein to employees uh, many employees do not recognize we recognize hi nahi karte ke unke paas jo knowledge hai theek hai wo um, property hai ya province hai unke employers ki theek hai and they may see uh, think of it ke unki wo apni intellectual capital apna zati hai and it's not uh, related to their work or not the property of uh, their employers so they may seem no reason to share their knowledge with others to isliye us point of view se wo um, shayad ye samjhe ke dusron ke sath wo share hi na karna chahe apni knowledge because they think that that's their individual talent so they may see it as a personal and private اس کو پرائیویٹ اور پرسنل پوائنٹ ویو سے بھی لے سکتے ہیں اپنے نالج کو سو ٹو کمپاؤنڈ دس پرابلم دیر آر ڈس انسینٹیو ٹو نالج شیئرنگ ان موسٹ کارپوریٹ کلچرس سو اس کو کمپاؤنڈ کرنا اس پرابلم کو سو اس میں ڈس انسینٹیو ہیں نالج شیئرنگ کے کارپوریٹ کلچر میں لے کے آنے کے لیے اینڈ ان مینی آرگنائزیشنس انڈیویجولس پرسیو دیر گریٹسٹ ویلیو ٹو بی واٹ دے نو سو اور بہت ساری آرگنائزیشنس میں جو ہے انڈیویجولس جو ہے اس چیز کو پرسیو کرتے ہیں کہ ان کے زیادہ گریٹسٹ ویلیو جو ہے وہ دی جائے اس چیز کو جس ان کو نالج ہے جس بارے میں ناؤ فور دیم نالج از پاور دیر یونیک انفارمیشن سسٹم انفارمیشن گیوز دیم اسٹیٹس اینڈ آفن گارنٹیز دیٹ دے آر لسن ٹو اینڈ کنسلٹڈ سو نالج پاور کنسیڈر کی جاتی ہے اور ان کی یونیک انفارمیشن جو ہے ان کو اسٹیٹس دیتی ہے اور گارنٹی کرتی ہے کہ ان کو سنا جائے اور ان کو کنسلٹ کیا جائے نا فور سم اٹ از دیر انشورنس دیٹ دے ریمین ان امپلائمنٹ اور کچھ لوگ جو ہے نا ٹو ریمین امپلائڈ اٹس دیر انشورنس تو واٹ ہیپنس اف دے شیئر دیر نالج تو اگر وہ اپنی نالج شیئر کر دیں گے تو کیا فرق پڑے گا Now they may erode their personal value within the organization or they may be beaten to a promotion by a person with whom they shared an idea. So knowledge share karne ka unko kya nuksan ho sakta hai? Agar wo apne knowledge apne hat tak nahi rakhte individual or share karte hai. So maybe uska nuksan ye ho sakta hai ki unko maybe personal value ek organization mein na di jai. Ya phir unka idea jo hai wo jis person ke saath unhone share kiya hai wo us idea ko share kar jaye wo unki jagah promotion le jaye. so the other person may use their ideas as their own or dusre log jo hai wo uske ideas apne ideas bana ke use kar sakte hain aur ya show kar sakte hain ki unke apne ideas hain thus they may no longer be seen as valuable or important if their knowledge goes into the public domain so phir agar unke knowledge jo hai wo publicly open ho jata hai ya sabko malum ho sakta hai sab log usse fayda utha sakte hain to phir wo uska maybe value ya importance kam ho jati hai So bearing these considerations in mind, people usually have good reasons to hoard and withhold information. So these days, other log apni information apne tak rakte hain, withhold rak kar ke rakte hain. They don't share it with people. So it is the source of their own power. Unki apni power ka source hai, and sometimes um, of their identity and status as well. Or unka kahi the phone ki identity or status may be help karti ho. So this is particularly so if there is a threat of redundancy. So such situations um, make employees who remain after a downsizing exercise uh, very wary about being too public with their what they know. So uh, sometimes yeah, this is particularly so threat had redundancy ki changes ki. So um, 
समटाइम्स एम्प्लॉज जो है खासतौर पर अगर किसी कंपनी में डाउन साइजिंग हो रही है लोगों को निकाला जा रहा है कम किया जा रहा है स्टाफ तो उस जगह पर फिर वो उनके अंदर ये एक डर बैठ जाता है कि उनको अपनी नॉलेज जो है वो पब्लिकली वो हर एक के साथ शेयर नहीं करनी चाहिए ना दो रिमेन इन अ जॉब मे सी देयर पर्सनल नॉलेज एज देयर ओनली फॉर्म ऑफ पर्सनल पावर इन एन अदरवाइज अनसर्टेन एंड फ्रेजल फ्यूचर सो खासतौर पे वो लोग जो रह जाते हैं जॉब में वो अपनी पर्सनल नॉलेज को अपनी पावर समझते हैं अपनी पर्सनल पावर समझते हैं क्योंकि उनके नजर में उनका फ्यूचर बहुत फ्राजाइल है ठीक है बहुत अनसर्टन है कोई कंफर्मेशन नहीं है कि कल क्या हो तो वो उस चीज को अपनी नॉलेज को अपनी पावर बना लेते हैं नाउ इट इज द टास्क ऑफ मैनेजर्स टू डिवेलप प्रैक्टिस दैट इनकरेज नॉलेज शेयरिंग सो ये टास्क फिर मैनेजर्स का आ जाता है ठीक है ना द मैनेजमेंट हैज टू इनकरेज पीपल टू शेयर नॉलेज विदाउट हैविंग द फेयर ऑफ लूजिंग पावर और इम्पोर्टेंस सो इट इज अ की एस्पेक्ट ऑफ क्वालिटी इम्प्रूवमेंट दैट पीपल कैन शेयर द नॉलेज एंड एक्सपर्टीज सो क्वालिटी इम्प्रूवमेंट का एक की फैक्टर जो है की एस्पेक्ट यह है कि वो लोग अपनी नॉलेज और एक्सपर्टीज को शेयर कर सकें ना प्रॉपर टीम वर्क कैन नॉट ऑपरेट विदाउट इट और प्रॉपर टीम्स जो है वो काम ही नहीं कर सकती उसके बगैर जब तक लोग अपनी नॉलेज शेयर एक दूसरे के साथ ना करें सो बिल्डिंग ऑफ ट्रस्ट इज की टू नॉलेज शेयरिंग सो नॉलेज शेयरिंग में ट्रस्ट जो है बिल्ड करना दैट इज द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट सो नो ब्लेम कल्चर एंड विलिंगनेस टू टेक रिस्क एंड टू लर्न फ्रॉम मिस्टेक्स एंड फेलियर्स और पार्ट ऑफ डिवेलपिंग अ नॉलेज शेयरिंग कल्चर सो थोड़ा क्वालिटी मैनेजमेंट आपके प्रोग्राम में या ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में जब ही आ सकती है जब आप नॉलेज शेयरिंग हो ठीक है और उसमें कोई ब्लेम ना हो किसी के बारे में कि आपने गलत किया या आपने गलत किया या द वर्कर्स हैव डन रॉन्ग या उनकी मिस्टेक्स हैं बट रिस्क लेने का भी उनको ये नहीं दे शुड बी विलिंग टू डू दैट एंड अपनी मिस्टेक्स अपनी गलतियों से अपने फेलियर से सीखना और उनको डेवलप करना और नॉलेज शेयरिंग कल्चर एक क्रिएट करना डिवेलप करना वो इम्पोर्टेंट है एक ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में so communities of knowledge if we talk about communities it is important to understand that knowledge is often built up and generated by informal uh, self organizing networks of practitioners so these uh, ad hoc groups are known as communities of practice or knowledge communities सो so, um, अगर ये देखा जाए कि इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड कि नॉलेज जो है वो एक इट्स बेल्ट ऑप या यानी उसको बनाया गया है ये जनरेट किया है सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग नेटवर्क और प्रैक्टिशनर प्रैक्टिशनर्स की सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग नेटवर्क्स की बेस पे और इन ग्रुप्स को कम्युनिटीज ऑफ प्रैक्टिस और नॉलेज कम्युनिटीज का नाम दिया गया ना दे और ग्रुप्स ऑफ लाइक माइंडेड पीपल हु हैव मेट टू शेयर एक्सपीरियंस सो ये उन लोगों के ऊपर बेस्ड है जो um, लोग उनकी थॉट यानी उनके मिलती जुलती हो उनकी सोच एक जैसी हो एंड उन्होंने वो अपनी नॉलेज या अपने एक्सपीरियंस शेयर करने के लिए मिले हो सो दे हैव मेनी सिमिलैरिटीज विद क्वालिटी टीम्स एंड क्वालिटी सर्कल्स सो क्वालिटी टीम्स और क्वालिटी सर्कल्स में उनका सिमिलर uh, चीजें हैं बहुत दे डिफर फ्रॉम वर्क टीम्स इन दैट दे आर नॉट फॉर्मल और टास्क ओरिएटेड टीम्स सो ये डिफर कहाँ से करते हैं कहाँ से डिफरेंट हो जाते हैं कि ये टीम्स जो है दे आर नॉट फॉर्मल और टास्क ओरिएंटेड टीम्स नहीं होते ये ठीक है ये वर्क टीम्स होते हैं सो इंस्टेड दे आर सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइज नेटवर्क हुज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज वन दैट मेक्स सेंस टू इट्स मेंबर्स और ये ऐसे सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइज नेटवर्क्स बन जाते हैं ये टीम्स जो अपने मेंबर्स uh, uh, को uh, उनके मेंबर्स को उनको समझना या ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशंस को जानने के लिए वो इम्पोर्टेंट रोल प्ले करते हैं नाउ दे आर ऑफन ब्रॉड टुगेदर बाय कॉमन इंटरेस्ट एंड फाइंड देयर कॉमन पर्पज टू बी द नीड टू शेयर एक्सपर्टीज एंड सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम सो समाइम्स देर बॉट टूगेदर यानी इकट्ठा उनको कॉमन इंटरेस्ट में लेके आया जाता है ठीक है एंड दे फाइंड अ कॉमन पर्पज जो है एंड अ नीड टू शेयर देयर एक्सपर्टीज और प्रॉब्लम्स को सॉल्व करना अपना एक्सपर्टीज को शेयर करना सो दे डिवेलप इन अ सोशल स्पेस बिटवीन फॉर्मल हेरियाज एंड प्रोजेक्ट टीम्स सो ये एक डेवलपमेंट जो है इनकी वो सोशल स्पेस जो है बिटवीन फॉर्मल हेरिकीज एंड प्रोजेक्ट टीम्स के बीच में जो है ना वो हो जाती है सो दे आर क्रिएटेड आउट ऑफ अ नीड टू शेयर एंड कम्युनिकेट आइडियाज 
सो ये आइडियाज शेयर करना और कम्युनिकेट करने से क्रिएट होते हैं द आइडिया ऑफ नॉलेज कम्युनिटी नेटवर्क इज वन दैट हैज अ स्ट्रॉन्ग रेसोनेस फॉर एजुकेशन सो टीचर्स एंड लेक्चरर्स आफ्टर ऑल हैव अ स्ट्रॉन्ग सेंस ऑफ देयर ओन वर्थ एंड अ स्ट्रॉन्ग सेंस ऑफ प्रोफेशनलिज्म सो टीचर्स और लेक्चर में अगर हम एजुकेशनल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से देखें तो उनमें भी एक uh, अपनी वर्थ का उनका स्ट्रॉन्ग सेंस उन्हें मालूम होता है और अपनी प्रोफेशनलिज्म का भी स्ट्रॉन्ग सेंस होता है सो दे रिलेट वेल टू कलीग्स एंड यूज देयर पेयर्स एज साउंडिंग बोर्ड फॉर आइडियाज so it may be that the knowledge community is the model for productive knowledge sharing in education so knowledge community jo hai wo knowledge sharing ke ek um, model ban jata hai productive way education field mein so after all we commonly talk of a community of scholars um, but of 10 uh, there is no institutional encouragement or structure to help uh, such communities flourish so education needs to work hard to develop real communities of scholars knowledge communities especially and um commonly in, when you talk about community of scholars to koi as a um there is no institutional encouragement or structure that would help them flourish or improve so education needs to work hard to develop real community so after all in even we talk about a community of scholars so hame phir uh, there is no institutional encouragement let's say or structure to a community uh, community ko flourish karne mein help kare so it's um, education needs to work hard usko apni uh, community scholars ki usko create karne ke liye education field mein bahut zyada kaam karne ke knowledge communities ab kiski base mein now they are self organized in formal groups ठीक है सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइज ग्रुप्स होते हैं हैव सोशल मीनिंग टू मेंबर्स हु वैल्यू द रिलेशनशिप फॉर्मड इन द कम्युनिटी और लर्निंग कम्युनिटीज आल्सो बिल्ट अराउंड कॉमन पर्पसेस एंड थिंग्स दैट मैटर एंड इन्वॉल्व द कॉमन परस्यूट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स एंड सोल्यूशन सो नॉलेज कम्युनिटीज जो है वो सेल्फ ऑर्गेनाइज होती हैं ठीक है एंड दे आर फॉर्मड इन अ कम्युनिटी और लर्निंग कम्युनिटीज होती हैं ठीक है और उनको कॉमन पर्पसेज होते हैं ठीक है जिससे वो इन्वॉल्व है एंड उनका कॉमन परस्यूट होता है किसी प्रॉब्लम या उसके सोल्यूशन लाने में ना दे ऑल्सो ऑपरेट अक्रॉस फंक्शन एंड डिविजन्स they can be supported by nurturing management and leadership styles uh, have a life cycle which depends on the value of the task to the group are uh, repositories of tacit knowledge can make tacit knowledge explicit can keep organizations at the leading stage of knowledge creation can effectively use the emotional iqs of their members can be supported by nurturing management and leadership styles and have a strong resonance in education so uh, unke functions or divisions jo hai unko uh, operate karne mein easy hona chahiye phir then there are, uh, so uh, com- communities of knowledge jo hai wo based hoti hai supported by nurturing management theek hai ye leadership style se wo um, develop hoti hai then they have a life cycle theek hai jo depend karti hai on the value of the task to the group theek hai um, or repositories of tacit knowledge ठीक है एंड कैन मेक टैस ऑफ नॉलेज एक्सप्लिसिट एंड दे कैन कीप ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एट लीडिंग एज ऑफ नॉलेज क्रिएशन सो एक उनको लीडिंग एज पे लेके आता है नॉलेज क्रिएशन के लिए ठीक है उनके इमोशनल आई क्यूज अपने मेंबर्स के उनको इफेक्टिवली यूज करना इस्तेमाल करना एंड देन लीडरशिप स्टाइल्स को उस तरीके से अपने लिए यूज करना है कि वो एक स्ट्रांग रेजनेंस लेके आ सके एजुकेशन फील्ड में so despite all the discussion about knowledge as the key to organizational success in the 21st century there is still very little known about the best way to leverage knowledge in a practice and to create it systematically so knowledge communities are probably one of the best practical means of developing and leveraging tacit knowledge and as such many uh, commentators see them as a way forward so such communities can of course be virtual communities and need not have a defined geographical place so they are not a suit they are not suitable uh, for other elements of the organizational structure so agar hum uh, 21st century ke hisab se dekhe to ek organizational ke success ke liye uh, discussions about knowledge wo bahut important hai aur phir unko practice karna aur create karna systematically wo important aa jata hai knowledge communities then are maybe probably uh, one of the best practical means of developing ek um, aise um, tacit knowledge ko uh, share karne ke tarikon ko 
and then uh, such communities can also be well, virtual communities view sakti hain theek hai and they need to have defined geographical places also and a substitute uh, let's say for uh, elements of the organizational structure organizational structure ke elements uh, ke liye important hai so they should not uh, let's say replace the more formal work team or project groups so there are much uh, looser networks that colleagues form themselves so um, formal work team nahi ho sakta ya project group nahi ho sakta but we can say that there more ke, um, colleagues khud apne taur pe ye banate they are important additions to the important array of relationships in an organization but one uh, specifically focused on leveraging knowledge creation so knowledge creation ke liye wo important ho jate hain ek organization mein the important goal of such communities is their communication mechanisms aur inka sabse important uh, point kya hai ki inke andar communication mechanisms hain theek hai now it is through communication with colleagues that knowledge is shared <coughs> so knowledge communities are idly placed to use communications techniques such as storytelling and learning histories to advantage so knowledge communities hum kehte hain ke wo communication techniques ko behtar maybe storytelling mein ya apni histories ko learn karne ke tareeke batane ke liye use kar sakte hain apni advantage ke liye now to quote from seely and brown the talk and the work the communications are inseparable so talk and work wo do cheeze aisi hain jinko separate nahi kiya ja sakta now the talk made the work intelligible and the work made the talk intelligible so communities exchange and interpret informations build expertise act as repositories of knowledge so communities jo hai wo apne exchange aur uh, information ko interpret kar lete hain aur apni expertise ko build kar lete hain uh, taaki they, they can act knowledgeably so they can create new knowledge and ideas that can keep the institution at the cutting edge और वो ऐसे क्रिएट कर सकते हैं ऐसे नॉलेज को या ऐसे आइडियाज को ताकि इंस्टीट्यूशन को वो कटिंग एज पे लेके आ सके ना देर इज अ फॉर्म ऑफ कलेक्टिव इंटेलिजेंस एक फॉर्म है कलेक्टिव इंटेलिजेंस का व्हिच बिल्ड्स एंड डेवलप्स टैसेट नॉलेज जो कलेक्टिव uh, इंटेलिजेंस को हम कह सकते हैं कि उसको बिल्ड करना या टैसेट नॉलेज को डेवलप करने के लिए जो है uh, हम कलेक्टिव इंटेलिजेंस के लिए एक फॉर्म क्रिएट करते हैं सो टिपिकली नॉलेज कम्युनिटीज देन डिवेलप अराउंड थिंग्स दैन मैटर एंड हैव एन इम्पोर्टेंट रोल इन नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट एंड क्रिएशन नॉलेज मैनेजमेंट एंड क्रिएशन में इम्पोर्टेंट है सो दे आर एक्सट्रीमली गुड एट प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग पर्टिकुलरली दोज दैट आर अनएक्सपेक्टेड तो प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग में बड़े हेल्पफुल होते हैं खासतौर पर उन पर जो अनएक्सपेक्टेड हो फॉर्मल स्ट्रक्चर देन आर ऑफन नॉट गुड एज एट द आउट ऑफ द ब्लू डिफिकल्टीज वाइल इन फॉर्मल नेटवर्क मे बी आर हाईली अडेप्टेबल बिकॉज दे डू नॉट हैव टू फॉलो द प्रोटोकॉल ऑफ एजुकेशनल so learning conversations learning from tacit knowledge tacit knowledge is based on insights and personal experiences it can be an uncertain and personal sometimes a chaotic form of knowledge so um, sometimes uncertain bhi ho jata hai personal bhi ho jata hai it is difficult to capture and use effectively the knowledge conversion and uh, sharing processes can be problematic on an individual level acquiring tacit knowledge is about how people organize their own world and acquire important inform, uh, informal competencies uh, so um hum agar dekhen ke difficult hai usko capture karna ya effectively usko use karna ya knowledge convert karna theek hai ya sharing process jo hai wo bada pra- प्रॉब्लमैटिक बन जाता है जब ऑन एन इंडिविजुअल लेवल खासतौर पे जब टैसेट नॉलेज को आपने इज अबाउट हाउ पीपल ऑर्गेनाइज देयर वर्ल्ड अपने दुनिया को कैसे ऑर्गेनाइज करते हैं एंड हाउ दे अक्वायर इम्पोर्टेंट कॉम्पिटेंसी सो ऑन एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल लेवल मे बी टैसेट नॉलेज कैन कंटेन मच इम्पोर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट वट मेक्स द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टेक so it is a rich source of information by which an organization can learn from its successes and failures so um hum ye keh sakte hain ki ek organization apne um success aur failures se seekh sakte hai iske through theek hai and however it is often seen as too difficult to handle sometimes it's difficult to handle so the resolution is not to dismiss tacit knowledge rather ways need to be found to make tacit knowledge more generally accessible and uh, easier to manage so one answer to this problem is to use a technique known as storytelling or learning conversations 
So learning conversation, storytelling, learning histories and organization dialogues uh, as they are uh, variously called involve employees uh, reliving in a structured way critical um, moments in the life of the organization and they can be said to be um, talking therapy for organizations. Uh, this method is straightforward and uh, but powerful also. So it involves employees meeting together in a structured way and discussing what went right and uh, wrong in particular situations. So from that they agree the lessons that emerge from them. So in say we agree karte hai ki kya galat hua, kya sahi hua aur usse kya unhone lessons hasil kiya. It is important that the critical episodes are fully discussed, documented and evaluated. So and that is one other important thing. So learning conversations uh, attempt to document all that happened in such a way that uh, it is helpful so that an organization can learn from its own experiences. So learning conversations is uh, attempt karna ya document karna is liye, um, maybe it's helpful that an organization can experiences ko judge kar sakte ki experiences se unhone kya sikha hai. Now the idea is that an organization communicates how it does things and the processes it uses but particularly the role individuals played and how they felt and acted in the process. So it's not all about the organization ne communicate kaise kiya ke usne apne individuals ke jo roles hai uska bataya ke unho ne kaise how they felt and unho ne us process mein kaise act kiya. So the learning conversations uh, can contain reports, surveys and notes of actions but they also require personal and team evaluations and critical self-assessments. So they can be used as a source of so staff training and future decision making also. So this critical incident storytelling process requires employees to reflect on their experiences and as uh, we shall see in the future chapter the technique as much in common with action learning. So usko hum action learning ke saath join kar sakte ke sakte ke with uh, storytelling process jo hai wo action learning ki tarah hai. So analyzing a critical incident involves looking at such things as did the employees enjoy the activity, were they surprised about the way they acted, did this, uh, it stretch them, excite or scare them, have they developed new skills in the process. So analyze karna ke critical incident jo hai it involves ke aisi cheezon ko dekhna ke employees jo hai wo apni activities ko um, judge kar rahe hain ya where they su uh, surprised about ke unhone kis tarike se add kiya did it stretch them did it excite or scare them or phir was the outcome of the activity successful or uska outcome kya successful tha so most importantly what uh, did they learn from the experience experience se unhone kya cheez seekhi so this process of tacit conversion involves bonding, sharing information and communicating best practices, success stories and failures. So the social process of storytelling makes people relive the critical incident as part of the process of evaluation. So to be effective such techniques need to be well structured with a good problem solving agenda and cultivating in an action plan to take the learning forward. So the learning conver conversation approach helps to overcome fear of change. Many knowledge management programs have failed because managers have underestimated the fear of change and the scary nature of the unknown among their employees. So kind of management programs is liye fail ho jate hain ke unko apne uh, workers ya apne employees ka jo hai um, unhone underestimate kiya hota hai ke and they are um, the change and the scary nature of the unknown among their employees us cheez ko overcome nahi kar pate. So there is a danger that organizations become awash with their own propaganda and fail to recognize both the weaknesses but also the strengths within themselves. So that would come from uh, learning conversations, uh, learning from tacit knowledge also. So uh, students we will continue this uh, lecture, uh, these slides uh, further in our next lecture. We will still be speaking about learning conversations and learning from the tacit knowledge and the way you can. So um, the effective techniques of a well-structured uh, would be like problem solving agenda aisa ho, culminate aisa kiya jai, ya forward learning ho, learning conversation approaches wo uh, fear of change ko dur karne ke liye uh, fayda mand hai. And, um,
sometimes there is a danger that organizations do hai they would apne hi propaganda ki wajah se wo fail ho jate and they um, recognize both the weaknesses but the strengths also apne andar wo ye cheeze bhi judge kar lete hain so we will go with uh, the continuation of this topic in our next lecture thank you so much